Hi, my dear Astro family. So today we are going to be looking at Joe Biden's chart. And I decided to do that because obviously we are, you know, coming up to the elections in a few months time and so on. So I decided that maybe it's a good time to actually start looking at uh, the candidates chart as well. What are their chances and so forth? And uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoy it. This is more of a political video, which I actually do not like making if I really want to be honest. So I would like everyone to stay away from any type of political debates. This video is not going to be emphasizing my views on, you know, my political views. This is purely astrology. It is about, in a way, education as well as entertainment. And hopefully it gives um, uh, some people some enlightenment as well. So that's the intention of this video. So please refrain yourself from any, any political debates. This is not the place for that. So what we are going to do is we are going to be looking at Joe Biden's chart. But actually, I wanted to answer some questions as well, because uh, people were asking me, how did you know that uh, Trump might be, um, you know, attacked? And one of the reasons why I knew that, so I'm going to just bring up his chart to answer that question. One of the reasons why I knew that is because, um, first of all, we've got his midheaven on 24 degree of Taurus. And the midheaven is a very much of a public point of our chart. This is kind of like when you are visible. This is a visibility point. This is a point where kind of like you are on a stage, let's call it that way. But also it represents your reputation as well, your achievements, your highest goals, uh, we can call the meat heaven as the plan of the gods with you. Now, of course, we have got Uranus Mars conjunction happening very close by to your meat heaven, to his meat heaven, and we have got uh, a, a very malefic fixed star called uh, Algol as well there. So when we start looking at what uh, Mars represents, Mars is knife and attack and gunshot, but also it's about fighting for something, your survival needs, but also it defends as well, others. And uh, uh, from a medical point of view, actually it represents the head and also it represents your ears as well. One of the ears is uh, very Saturnian, the other one is very Marsian. Um, I always mix up the left and the right, so do not ask me please which one is which. One of the year is Mars, the other one is uh, Saturn, actually. And then we've got Uranus there, which is surprising, unpredictable events. Also, this is something to do with a rebellious person. So now the other thing uh, I have noticed in his chart was that the Uranus-Mars conjunction is very tightly, almost to the seconds, squaring his natal Mars as well at the same time. So what it kind of suggests to us that he's got really Marsian moments going on at the moment. And because Mars is coming from his first house, very tightly uh, connected with his body, I thought that he was going to, um, his body is going to get violated, let's call it that way. So this is one of the reasons why I believe that he might have a certain type of um, kind of like terror attack attempts against him. Now you can see that his Mars is going to be actually triggered by Uranus three times. So we had the first, well, actually the first one is going to be happening on the 20th, uh, sorry, 29th of July. So that might be an interesting one. We're going to have one on October 5th or 6th, and we're going to have one in May 9th or 10th, 2025 as well. So Uranus is in an ongoing square to his Mars. And because Uranus is coming from the first, uh, sorry, the 11th house, 
So how it could be affecting his body is that a public is going to be attacking him. The, um, the public becomes rebellious against him, or it could even indicate a sudden rise of his popularity as well, or he's going to be working extremely hard because Mars at the end of the day wants to achieve something, especially in the sign of Leo. I would do anything to get visible. Although with Uranus Mars squaring his natal Mars, I would, you know, this is a, uh, especially on Algol, and Algol is kind of like the beheaded person. So this is very disruptive, pretty much. Uh, it, uh, that's why I mentioned in the video that this is not for a gentle soul type of person, because I can hardly see many positive things uh, in the world with Uranus and Mars uh all goal conjunction on a personal level it might be different you know and then i gave a couple of ideas how we can use in the bestest form that type of aspect um yeah so that's the that's the you know and then on top of that because he's got a leo mars we should be expecting a lot of drama with him as with him as well or drama around him uh, too. So that will be, that's just a short uh, overview of, um, of uh, Trump's chart. Now, but today I wanted to talk to you about Joe Biden a little bit. And this is going to be a short video, by the way. So um, I don't want to keep you around too long. But I thought it would be a great time to show how to use some of the timing techniques, which I'm going to be teaching actually in my upcoming one year course. There is one space left. So if you are interested, uh, drop me an email, please. Uh, there is one space left and it's starting next week. So first of all, what we see is, so I wanted to have a quick look at his chart to see uh, where the Uranus Mars Argo conjunction will influence him the most. So remember, it has happened on 20, or it is happening on 26 degree of Taurus. And what you see is it's in his sixth house, and it is bang on opposing his uh, Sun and Venus conjunction. Now, why this is very interesting to me, on one hand, is because the sun is the planet of vitality and Venus is the ruler of his sixth house. So it is talking to me about a declining health issue, but it is kept secret. Because this, this is the 12th house, this is something that is the, in, it re, it's the representation of, it, of the invisible realm. This is not something that we are pretty much aware of at the moment. But I think it's going to get highlighted. And I'm going to talk about that as well in a short while. At the same time, of course, if it's not a health issue, the sun might be talking to us about our vocational call and Venus ruling the sixth house, uh, which is the house of service. So th there are certain type of disruptions we might be experiencing or secret enemies against his uh, political views, for example, against his uh, mission, political mission as well at the same time. So I would say that he is going to be, I mean, I know he has been asked already to step down. And if I'm not mistaken, he refused so. But I do believe that he might not be able to finish off his own um, term either because of certain type of health issues, and I believe he's going to get replaced with someone else. And one of the, um, I'm going to also talk to you about that as well, uh, but his popularity probably going to be very affected just by the fact that Pluto is squaring his moon. And the moon is the planet of popularity. We're going to come on to that in a short while. So uh, the sixth house is his working environment as well. So with Uranus and Mars, there could be disruptions in his working environment. There could be sh sudden shifts in his office, as well as in his well-being, as I said. Now, the other thing we might see, and uh, that Pluto is currently um, sitting on one degree 
of Aquarius, it's bang on square in his moon. And with Pluto, we reveal something. And the moon also represents your body as well. So in the sixth house, this is telling me that he has got certain type of health issues again. Uh, moon is also the ruler of his eighth house, which is not only connected to death, by the way. Um, if you start thinking about that the sixth house has got a queen kongs towards the rising sign, a natural queen kongs, as well as the eighth house has got a natural queen kongs towards the rising sign. So the eighth house is also connected to medical matters as well, by the way. And uh, but uh, think about that, for example, we need a surgery to save our lives or we need to go to, uh, you know, meet doctors and so forth. So um, I do believe with this Pluto moon, uh, he could be having a life, a life changing surgery, for example, or a life threatening illness that might be coming into the picture, too. And on top of that, Moon is the exalted ruler of Taurus as well. Now, a, a couple of words about exaltation. Exaltations are a, like an elevated position, okay? So uh, sometimes it becomes extremely serious at the beginning, but it goes away very quickly. Or it starts from nowhere, and then all of a sudden it becomes quite serious. So this would indicate to me that we're talking about certain type of uh, hidden health issues with Pluto being in the mixture, but um, but it's more of a serious one. And this might be a uh, physical. I mean, with Taurus, it should be more of a physical one rather than mental uh, health issues, though. So again, we see something to do with sickness, but the moon also represents the public as well. And uh, Pluto squaring the moon can, for example, indicate the loss of publicity, the loss of support to people, or he is trying to empower people to get his votes as well. I mean, the only good thing uh, that is happening to him this year is actually Venus. Um, but anyway, let's talk about that later. Now, the other thing that I've seen is that solar arc Pluto just entered Scorpio and it's going to be remaining there for him for 30 years. And uh, first of all, uh, it has entered his 10th house. So his public image is collapsing. Um, and Pluto is opposing his natal moon, which is on zero degree of Taurus. Again, it's an indication of certain type of health issues or loss of publicity and so on. But obviously, it's very interesting that he's got a lot of Plutonian interests this year. Moon is ruling the eighth house. Uh, the moon is actually in the sixth house for him in the solar, sorry, in the solar arc chart. Pluto opposing the moon, Pluto squaring the moon. So we've got a lot of Plutonian themes and Pluto is associated with power, wealth, money and death and rebirth. So either he needs to be reinventing himself in his career and maybe his logo, um, not, not logo, but motto or the political views need to change or this could actually talk to us about uh, basically the fall of his empire. Um, so that's very interesting. And obviously, he is also he is in a tenth house perfected year. Um, if you don't know what perfection is, basically every single year one of the house gets activated. So, and the ruler of his perfected house is in the twelfth. So this could talk to us about loss of status. This could talk to us about a working behind the scenes on something. Uh, creating certain type of new projects, getting ready for a new chapter in my life. And also it could indicate loss of public attention, loss of elections, the death of his career. So this is suggesting to me that I can hardly imagine with this chart he would be winning. Four years ago when I made my prediction, I predicted Joe Biden to win. If you recall, uh, this time around, I'm really hesitant to say so. But I'm also very hesitant with Donald Trump as well, though. 
So we will see, but I need to be diving into Donald Trump's chart uh, more actually. So I'm going to be analyzing that as well uh, later on in a different uh, video. Uh, so with his low of 6 and 12 heart activations, I would say that uh, he's going to be attracting a lot of enemies. I also would like to mention that Pluto will be retrograding back into Capricorn. It's going to be sitting on 29 degree between September 2nd till November 19th. And that is tightly in an in conjunction to his Chiron. So it looks like he's going to get wounded. His power is going to get wounded. Uh, and this could also indicate certain type of medical issues. So this is what I see in uh, Joe Biden's chart. And on top of that, I also looked at his current... Why is it not clicking? Hold on. Uh, just a second. My um, laptop went frozen. Oh, here you go. It's working now. And I've also looked at his uh, solar return chart as well, briefly. And a couple of things that I've noticed here. He's got a Leo rising sign, which could indicate that there is going to be a lot of drama this year in his life. The ruler is, of course, in the fourth house in, conjunction, in, in a conjunction to Mars and Ceres. And the series, series is about self-nurture. Mars is about struggle. And the fourth house, which is the house of endings. So it looks like that his visibility is coming to an end. What I also noticed in his natal chart by transit, that Saturn is actually next year about to go, or not next, uh, yes, next year, sorry, about to go on his series. So again, we've got this self-nurturing energy here, basically learning to be taking care of himself. And by the way, Saturn also represents endings and the fourth house also represents endings as well. And Saturn comes from the seventh house, so end of a relationship, for example, end of a contractual agreement that we might be seeing there. So going back onto his um, uh, solar return chart, I looked at that Saturn is actually in the eighth house. And well, if I really want to be frank with you, I think um, we might see him departing. I mean, a lot of endings coming to his life shortly, whether it is his uh, job or actually the end of life. But he is facing a lot of endings here. Uh, and uh, this would be for me happening actually until about 2025. Uh, May. So this is a brief video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe, press like. And if you didn't change, like it, that's okay. No problem. Um, but please don't make any comments, uh, political, politically involved comments on the channel. Thank you and have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.